Окей. Всім доброго вечора. Дякую, що долучились до нашого вебінару від магістрської програми Data Science. Хочу вам представити Олександра Гріса і Михайла Кобаєвника з Scode Game. А, і цього вечора Олександр і Михайло розкажуть про застосування методів Data Science до спортивного аналізу, використовуючи вибірку передбачення голів гравцем у футбольній грі. Я надіюсь, що я правильно. Але я думаю, що ви більше розкажете. І також маленька Маленький вступ, як буде відбуватися вебінар. Вебінар триває 40 хвилин. Після цього ми відділяємо 20 хвилин на питання. Питання ми просимо задавати у слайдо, і ось код на подію, але я зараз його ще скину в чат. Ви можете голосувати за, за ці запитання, і таким чином вони будуть мати вищий пріоритет. І в кінці ми підготували маленьку презентацію про наступні наші події. Отже, Олександр, тобі слово, Олександр, yes, please, yes. Yes, yes. hi. Uh, I will continue in English uh, from here on because uh, my Ukrainian is a little bit rusty, so I will just uh, continue in English. I hope you don't mind. I hope it's okay for you. Yep. Um, so uh, we're going to do a short presentation, me and my colleague, uh, uh, Mikhailo, about uh, how we use mathematics and statistics in uh, predicting sports models. Right, that is the topic of uh, the grand topic of our uh, presentation today, and uh, we are going to do some two, two examples about it. But uh, before we dive into this uh, uh, presentation, let me lay some groundwork, right? And that uh, that means explaining a little bit the field in which uh, we are working, and then I will hand over to Mikhailo to run us through the demos, because he has put a lot of effort into making uh, them really nice. So. Uh, I'm very, I'd be very happy to, uh, to listen as well to his presentation. So let me first share for a second my, uh, uh, my desktop to, to, to show you what we are talking about. Um, so, share. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, uh, yes, we can. Yep. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, what is uh, Scout Gaming Group? Scout Gaming Group is a gaming company. Um, and by gaming, I mean um, sports betting and fantasy sports uh, betting company that has office, this a Norwegian company that also has offices uh, in Ukraine. Our main uh, focus, it's, it's less traditional sports betting as you see in other uh, sports books, uh, but more on the fantasy sports side. So what is fantasy sports, right? The, the idea behind a fantasy sport is to be able to select players from a set of team, from a set of uh, teams, yes, and matches that are scheduled for a specific period, and then uh, you create your own dream team. That's why the name fantasy. Hello. Hello. Sorry. But it's why we have to mute somebody. Okay. Yeah. So you, you select, uh, and then you select your players from this, uh, from this uh, real team, and then you create your own dream team, hence the word fantasy, right? That's why it's called uh, fantasy sports. And um, you participate together with the other uh, participants in the fantasy tournaments. And uh, you pay for entrance in these fantasy tournaments. And then if you, your team is uh, successful, you win money, obviously. Uh, it has to do a lot, we need to do a lot of mathematics behind uh, in order for this game to work. On one side, uh, and let me show you, because uh, one of the things that you select about your team is about their price. So you cannot select uh, any team member, you have to optimize for a budget. So let me show you a little bit how this thing um, works to, to understand it better. So basically I'm here on the fun team site. Fun team is our main uh, website. We can enter the, uh, I'm selecting here a fantasy tournament, right? Um, let's say Belarus uh, Premier League. Okay, and as I was mentioning before, here you have the list of players that are available to select in this uh, match. So from here, what, and I have here, uh, I don't know if you see my mouse, but here on uh, remaining budget, I have one, 100 million. To, to spend on. And I can complete my, uh, my team doing uh, things like this. Uh, yeah, I need to select the demo effect. <laughs> yep. 
I'm saying here that this is my, uh, my dream team. And as you can see, as I'm selecting players, my budget is get, gets consumed. So basically I need to optimize my team for this budget in order to make the most amount of points. Okay, definitely there are two things here regarding mathematics. One of them is how do we create this budget and how do we price the players in such a way that uh, the game is balanced and you don't have obvious choices. And the other one, from the player's perspective, how do you predict the player's performances that uh, your team is going to win? And this is something that we are going to take, uh, uh, Mikhailo is going to walk us uh, further to that. This is one type of uh, sports prediction that we're using. The other type of sports prediction is in our fantasy-oriented sports book. As you can see here, you can pitch players versus players, and you can place bets, for instance, in your uh, bet slip, to select which player is going to win based on these, uh, 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 based on the fantasy points, right? Uh, obviously, here there is the other part of mathematics that is involved, and that is how, what are the odds for the player to win? How much money would you stake? on the player in order for you to get a good return and for the company to make some money on the side as well. So this, because of this, sports prediction is our core uh, business. And because of this, we invest a lot into making uh, uh, sports models for various aspects, for the assists, for the number of goals that the player is making, for uh, a number of corners, for, and all these are spread across several sports, because if you look here, we have several uh, uh, leagues, we have several uh, type of sports ranging from uh, traditional football to esports to hockey, basketball, and so on. So this is, uh, this is the, the business of uh, Scout Gaming Group. And uh, from here on, I would like to, uh, to give the microphone to Mikhailo, who is, who is uh, our senior, one of our senior developers who work in the sports uh, uh, prediction uh, department. He's actually the team lead for the sports betting, uh, sports prediction department. So, uh, Mikhailo, can uh, please pick up the microphone and uh, talk a little bit about the maths behind? Uh, yes, Thanks, sure. Yeah. Hey guys. Yeah, so, let me share my screen. And um, yeah, Alex, I will probably stop your screen sharing for the developers. Um, Okay, um, yeah, so first of all, I have sent a link to the chat. Uh, that link contains uh, exactly the same presentation Alex and I are uh, using today for the demo. And on the last slide, uh, you have found two links. These are links to notebooks. They are published on Google Collab, and if you want, you can open them now or after. You can play around with the data with that algorithms, you can just check, check out how we do it and how it can be done, if you're interested in, um, into it. Uh, yeah, so let's start with some mess and um, let's talk a bit about sports events, especially about football events. Um, basically, if we are talking player performances in football, uh, all the events we have there, like goals, assists, uh, own goals, uh, yellow or red cards, whatever you name, uh, are distributed by Boston distribution. Uh, you probably have heard about it either in your um, bachelor degree programs, probably even in your high school, whatever. It's very simple and basically it's a variation of normal distribution it's, uh, that uh, it could be applied to the um, random variables that are not re uh, really often uh, exceeding the number of 10, for instance, right? So uh, we're not expect any team in the match to score more than 10 goals. We're not expecting any player to score more than 10 goals. It's obvious and that's why a person distribution is, is good for us and um, it's very simple also. So we can uh, relay our calculations uh, on it and for that distribution, we actually need only one parameter. Uh, it's called Lambda and basically it stands for expected value for the player to uh, for, the number, for the number of goals player should score or number of yellow cards he's going to get during the match. Um, yeah, probably I can make it full screen. 
Yeah, and uh, based on that um, distribution, we have a very um, uh, similar thing to the basic linear regression uh, most of you have heard about, I believe. It's called Poisson regression, and uh, basically it has very similar concepts. We have some amount of uh, dependent value, uh, well, we have one dependent value uh, variable, which is in our case logarithm from lambda, and we have a list of uh, independent variables like x1, x2, and so on. We can define it, uh, uh, define them, graph them, uh, and uh, we are supposed to find coefficients to make this equation as uh, good and as correct as possible. And uh, basically that's the idea, right? So the only difference uh, between Poisson regression and basic linear regression is that uh, uh, algorithm of uh, lambda on the left side of the equation. Yeah. Okay, and let me probably try to um, reduce my, yeah, it's better. So, yeah, and uh, one more thing we are going to talk about during the, our first task, and uh, one thing I would like to notice already is data normalization. Um, in football, um, as I have already mentioned, a lot of data, a lot of fields are distributed by Poisson, yeah? And that means uh, that our data is skewed. For instance, here is a distribution for um, uh, amount of goals, uh, normalized, scored in less 20 games, but uh, by all the players in uh, the previous season of English Premier League. It's obviously that most of the players are defenders, uh, maybe goalkeepers, uh, maybe uh, defensive midfielders, and they're not going to score a lot. Uh, a lot of them is not going to score at all. So we have a lot of uh, rows for which we have this number equal to zero and very small number when it grows starting from two to four and so on. Uh, but we can normalize it and after normalization, this data is much more appropriate to be used for our regression. Yeah, it's, it makes more sense. Our regression is not overfitting uh, on this uh, skewness, right? Yeah, and let's probably switch to the first practical task. Um, I'll probably stop sharing my screen and we'll start it once again. Uh, give me a second for it. Yeah. So, uh, it's our first problem. Uh, if you want to open it again, uh, you can just download the file from, from here. And on the last slide, it's going to be, there is a link to that uh, problem. And um, yeah, basically yeah. what do we want to do here? Um, we have already prepared and aggregated data from the previous season of English Premier League. Uh, it's, here in a file called EPL 1819.csv. And for we basically have uh, more than 6,000 rows here. Each row stands for player's performance. Uh, so single match might have up to, I don't know, probably 25 rows because, uh, because of the amount of players who participated in it. Each uh, player might have up to 36 rows because of the amount of games he played in and so on. Well, let's try to use this data set to try to predict amount of goal each player is going to score in a particular game, right? So um, I'm going to execute it here. It's Google Colab and yeah, we can execute all the uh, code here. Uh, right now I'm just loading uh, to the pandas data frame of data from my CSV file. And um, yeah, let's take a look into our data frame and uh, explain uh, the fields. So we have a first name and last name for the player. It's clear enough, right? We have position for each player. So Loftus Cheek is considered as midfielder. Uh, same for Adana Zar, same for uh, Nathan Ike is, is defender. Simple enough. Uh, game week stands for number of game week. Uh, these two are teams who are playing some game, and uh, here we have some num numeric fields which we actually are going to use to uh, for the predictions. These are our independent variables. First of them is expected goals. Uh, it is amount of goals that players team. In this case, uh, it's Chelsea, right? Because Lotus Chief is Chelsea player, is going to score in that party, was expected to score in that game versus 
Huddersfield in the first game week of this previous season. We knew this number before the start of the game, and we actually were, um, it, it was possible for us to use it before the game, right? Um, here we have uh, two numbers called goal, goals 20 and assist 20, and each of them stands for weighted mean for players' goals and assists in last 20 games. Um, you probably no uh, no concept of mean and what it mean it's basically the same idea but we are assigning slightly different weights uh, to the player performances based on how far ago it happened right so uh, the coefficient is going to be higher for the performance that happened on previous weekend and if it happened like a year ago the coefficient is going to be close to zero so so in that way we somehow um, taking into consideration uh, current uh, level of performances by the player. And all of these are, um, are also collected on the player, uh, on the previous player games, right? Uh, projected goal strata here is a bit tricky. Um, basically, it is um, ratio between uh, amount of goals players scored in last 20 games divided by a uh, right, uh, number of uh, goals that player's team has scored in last 20 games and multiplied by this expected goal score. That ratio basically gives us um, some numeric value between zero and one that explains uh, how uh, strong this player impact into the team result and multiplying it by expected goals we are having some sort of name prediction. Uh, and uh, these two columns here, team goals and team assists, are basically just sums of team goals and team assists in the last 20 games. All this da data we have uh, before the start of each of these games, right? And our goal here is to predict amount of goals play player is going to score in the game, right? So uh, let's start with it. Uh, let's start probably with explanation of the data. Uh, here we have some chart. Um, it's very simple and basically it shows correlation between uh, two values. Uh, so by x-axis we have number of goals that were scored by players. Uh, it is grouped so uh, by y-axis we have a mean value for <clears throat> uh, that particular group and uh, blue line stands for expert goals for team. Basically, this column and red uh, stands for NAO projection. Uh, that's what we called projected goals 20. So as we can see, we have correlation in both cases. Uh, the more goals a uh, player is scoring, the higher we expect these independent variables to be. And uh, that's why we can use them without, uh, within our regression. Yeah, now let's try to do some normalization. Um, First, um, okay, have as good as this one. We don't need to. Yeah, first, uh, we would like to find means and standard deviations, and then we're just uh, normalizing our data by these two values, uh, keeping them uh, keeping it before and uh, printing um, skewness parameter for each of the columns. Um, as you can see on these histograms, uh, some of the data we have is skewed, as I have mentioned before, right? It's goals 20, project goals 20, and assist 20. And if we will check here, uh, our numeric value for students is also very high, it's higher than one, which is not really good. Uh, for all three uh, parameters I have mentioned. Uh, so we would like to normalize it to make our regression uh, to work with these fields, yeah? And um, we're going to do it in a very simple way. We're going just to just take logarithm from these fields, uh, adding some very small value to it before. Uh, we're adding the 0 0.1 because we're not, it's not possible to get a uh, logarithm from, from zero and we would like to keep some kind of consistency here. Yeah, so we can uh, execute this code and we can check if yeah, so here is new shape of our skewed fields. 
uh, we still can see very huge spikes around zero met see zero uh, zero goals meant and uh, very small projection but it's okay we can't really do anything with it because probably all the players who are in the spikes are defenders or very weak mid midfielders and they're just not expected to score at um, almost any circumstances especially that we are taken in into consideration or the defense with hands uh yeah so let's move forward and let's um divide our data into two subsets um, in train and test data sets um uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this concept we uh can't really rely on the estimation of the model if we are estimating it and training it with the same data, right? So we would like to split our data into two parts and use one part for uh, training and and we, we call it train data and another part for testing and we call it test data. It's very common and I believe most of you are familiar with it. Uh, so let's just save it and um, yeah, now let's talk about the model a bit. Uh, I'm going to use stats models library here. Uh, stats models has um, Poisson regression. From the box, I'm not going to explain the formula once again here. Uh, I will just point out that uh, here we have um, first parameter that allows us to uh, explicitly describe dependent variable, which is in our case goal, and independent variables, which in our case are expected goals, goals 20, team goals in last 20, and projected goals in 20. Um, let's probably try to add here game pick x, uh, which actually does not really matter for the prediction, right? Because amount of goals is not dependent on game pick. And let's check what is going to happen here. Yeah, so we have some numbers, we have, um, some R2 score, which is small for both training set and test set. Uh, and in our um, regression summary, uh, we have also the z-score and confidence interval for each coefficient. And I would like to point it out because it's very common uh, issue and mistake. And um, in case we have uh, regressors that are confidence interval for which uh, in class zero, we can actually exclude our, uh, these progressors from our data set without any, uh, any harm done, right? Uh, it doesn't really improve our data set. Uh, this game X is just a random noise in our case and uh, this progression is very clearly safe so, so we can uh, remove it. And if before we, we were having like 9.4%, of the performance for our data set uh, and after removing we are going to get 9.5 percent which is not a big improvement but still it's slightly better and we're using slightly less data which is good uh yeah so um, i probably shouldn't go into too much de details explaining what these coefficients uh, matter uh, let's go to the results um, yeah, so here we're just adding to our train data and test data data frames uh, our prediction value. And let's check uh, the players for whom we have the highest predictions of the amount of goals. And as we can see, we have very good uh, predictions for uh, Mohamed Salah, Hurricane, Sergio Aguero. Um, if we include slightly more rules, we might get some more top players like Jamie Wardy here, right? And basically it means that our model is able to find and identify the strongest player in English Premier League. I believe those of you who are into football have heard about these guys before. And um, the model is saying that usually these guys are the most expected players in English Premier League to score a goal. It's actually fine, it's what we expect. Uh, we, we are sure that our model is working more or less well, and if we would like to check the other side, uh, the less possible players to score a goal, we can do it as well. And 
yeah, we have some defender from Burnley here. We have defender from Watford who is playing versus Liverpool, defender from Bournemouth who is playing versus Chelsea. So it's also expected, and all of these players uh, have very small uh, probability to score a goal as it matches. That's why its probability for them is around 1%. Um, okay, and now let's try to aggregate this data and check. Yeah, let's probably sh try to should we miss somebody. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, and let's probably check uh, what is going on if we are going to aggregate the data. Mm -hmm. So um, here is very simple chart. Um, by x axis, we have amount of goals uh, scored by the players in that group. As you can see, again, we are grouping by data by, by amount of goals, and for uh, that groups, we are looking for average value for the goal, which is basically same, uh, the goal we have grouped by, and uh, average value for prediction. And the question we would like to answer in this um, chart is, is our prediction actually higher if players score uh, more goals? Apparently it is. So it obviously is in a trend data set, which is the blue line. And it also is for the test data set, which is red line. But for red data set, we have a very strange uh, slope down here. Uh, let's probably try to explain it. Uh, we can uh, uh, try to sort values by goals instead of uh, predictions and Oh, yeah, and we have to get tiles in. Yeah, and we can see that in our test data set, we, we uh, have had only one hat trick made, right? So when the Lucas Moura have scored three goals uh, and probability for him wasn't really high, so we can just ignore the slope and explain it by the very small amount of data, which does not allow us to conclude any uh, to any conclusions out from this slope, yeah, from this part of the chart. Uh, yeah, well, that's basically it for the first problem. Uh, and now let's talk about um, the same task, but in a slightly different fashion. Um, yeah. Mm. So um, in this mm, problem, we are going to talk about goals again. And uh, at the end, we are going to mention fantasy points and explain how do we calculate points for them and how do we create duels for the players. But uh, first, let's probably try to go through our presentation a bit. And I would like to expect to you a few concepts you might or may or, or may not be familiar with. Yeah, so um, I believe Alex has already mentioned. Uh, I'm good. Frozen now? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's probably start with bias and matters. Uh, what is it? Uh, just before, like five minutes ago, we have tried to estimate our probabilities of the events with frequencies. Uh, and we have tried to solve the problem uh, analytically. Uh, now we are going to do a slightly different thing and we will try to interpret uh, the data we already have for the players. And instead of trying to, uh, to aggregate data and um, create regressions that is based on different regressors, we are going to do a slightly different thing. And we're going to look back in history and just check how many goals player used to score, right? And uh, in that case, we are going to um, think about each player as if uh, he is a random variable, plus or variable with unknown lambda. We would like to estimate that lambda. We don't know it for sure. We are, we are not even sure if it's constant, right? But we, we can try to make some estimation of that lambda and use it for further predictions. Uh, you can read about Bayesian methods in details. Uh, our webinar is too short to explain it in too many de details. Uh, I'm just going to mention that we are going to use PyMC library for that purpose and um, the main methods uh, it uses under the hood are 
Monte Carlo simulation, which is um, just to keep it short, uh, simulation where we can try to uh, make an estimation of uh, any possible value we can get for a particular event. And just to cover our um, plan with some small dots uh, uh, to see, um, to find its shape in a way, right? And another algorithm we're going to use is Metapolis algorithm. It, it is based on Markov chains, and basically, we are going to use it for sampling and for dependent events. Uh, let's uh, move to the notebook for now. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's try to work a bit with Italian theory A. In our case, we are going to um, use data, uh, data for the Juventus players who performed in the game of 24th game because Sarah I versus Brescia. It was in February and um, we are going just to load a data set with all the players. I believe we can even remove the style just to see all of them. So as you can see, it was not really a modern game and we do not have Cristiano Ronaldo here, for, for example. But still, there are relevant players uh, which are valid and would be good for our purpose. And also, we have the performance as data frame. Uh, it has a lot of data. I'm not sure we really need to go into too much detail to find all of them. Uh, we are going to use from here only player ID, which is the same that in this data frame. And uh, players number of goals. Uh, it's historical data, right? Um, also, I have to mention that this data frame is already sorted for us uh, by date. So starting from the uh, game somewhere in 2006 and ending uh, games that happened just three, three days before the event of interest. Yeah, so here it was 16th of February and here we have 13th. Uh, yes, let's continue. Um, first of all, we would like uh, to consider our player as um, sort of random variables, right? And for this random variables, we don't really know if they are lambdas. Uh, let's try to use PyMC to uh, try to find this lambda. And um, for the first iteration, we, we don't really know how many games do we need to uh make uh, any kind of good estimation right so what are we doing here i'm going to go through it line by line because probably it's not so common as linear regression uh we have um, player id and player performances here we are getting this data from the data frames i have shown you above uh, player performances is just a subset of performance data frame right uh, then for each value from our possible ends and by ends in our case i mean um possible amount of previous games we have used we, we are using for the player to predict his lambda uh, we're using 20 games 30 games and 100 games uh, for each iteration, we are going to create a new exponential random variable. We are going to call it lambda n, and so lambda 20, lambda 50, whatever. Uh, and we are going to uh, set another parameter for it, uh, which actually means how fast it's going to change. And um, we are setting it exponentially because it's the best form of random variable to predict lambda. Uh, for policy distribution, and after that, we are using this lambda n uh, for our policy distribution. But we are saying to our PyMC library that we already have some observation about these historical goals, and we are providing it with these historical goals. In our case, it's just uh, a subset which contains 20 numbers for if n is equal to 20, 50 numbers if n is equal to 50, and so on. And after that, we are just going to get a subsample from the data. It might take a few seconds. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Yeah, so what uh, Engine is doing right now, it tries to estimate a possible value of lambda 
which basically describes player strengths uh, based on the um, observations in history, right? And we are going to have three possible values for, for lambda. First one is going to be for 20 games, second for 50 games, and third one for 100. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we have three different random variables here. And simulation is done. Now we can try to visualize it. Okay, so here we have three histograms on the same plane. Uh, let's go through them one by one and let's try to explain uh, what does it mean. Uh, by x axis, we have a value of lambda. So basically, it's an estimation of amount of players' goal, uh, goals uh, in um, average game, right? It's the same player, so estimation should be basically the same, but we are using slightly different uh, chunks of data grid, so it's kind of different. Um, by y axis, we are having a number of simulations in uh, which we, we have resulted in such a number of uh, lambda. Let's start from 20. 20 is blue part and blue uh, bars here. Um, and, and as you can see, uh, blue one is very flat, right? Our model is really not certain if this player is strong or not. And uh, it might be 0 0.1 with some very high probability, right? It might be 0 0.3, it might be 0 0.5. And as you can see here, uh, prediction for 0 0.5 as a lambda is somehow sufficient even uh, only in the case we're talking about n equal to 20. If our n equal to 50 and uh, these are orange bars, it's a bit more narrow. And uh, we are more or less, we, we are slightly more certain about strengths of our player. We can say that he is almost not, uh, for sure not uh, having lambda equal to 0 0.5 or 0 0.4. And we somehow um, increasing our certainty in the lambda we have for our model. And if we're using uh, n equal to 100, uh, again, our um, histogram becomes very dense and we have only two very high bars here for 0 0.2 and for 0 0.3, which basically says that our player is Mm, our player's lambda is somewhere here between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. It's our way to estimate how strong he is and how mm, how big is expectancy of his goal. In this case, I would like to note that we are not talking about um, player's strengths in a particular game, right? Because in that game versus the best, uh, his um, expected amount of goals should be definitely higher than 0 0.25. Just because Brescia at it, the it moment was um, less team in Serie A, Juventus is one of the strongest and uh, uh, one of the Juventus leaders were missing that, that game, which means that uh, Gonzalo Iguain, who is uh, sort of backup player, had way more chances than, uh, than usually. But in this case, we're talking about uh, player strengths in average game, right? We're not going into any match details or anything. Uh, let's continue. And now that we have this uh, number 100, which is um, in a way better for us than any smaller number, we can try to use it and we can to apply the same model to all the players. Mm, I have already run this code on my local machine and probably I'm not going to do it again uh, just now because the time it took me like two minutes or something. Uh, yeah, but the idea is very same actually. Uh, we have um, a lambda value, which is unknown again. We have historical goals, which is person variable when lambda is our unknown exponential random variable and observed values are uh, these numbers we have from historical, from historical performances. And uh, after that, we're making a prediction based on just found lambda. Uh, that's basically it. We are, that's all we are doing in this uh, model and we are running it. Mm, and uh, after that, we can try to um, see 
where uh, values for lambda and for and actually predicted uh, amount of goals for each of the players. And we can see that for Honsalo, he going in from the first subsample. It is just as we expected, um, very close to 0 0.25. It's very same for another attacker, Paolo Dybala. It's very smaller for defenders like Bonucci or, uh, I don't know, uh, Sandro and so on and so forth. Uh, also, I would like to note that we have two different numbers here, and these numbers are almost the same, but a little bit, a bit different. First number is uh, our um, average value for the expected player goals. Uh, second one is our expected lambda. It's almost the same thing, but in fact, uh, the difference is that um, our um, sampler have added some noise and that's why we have this small uh, differences around 0 0.2 or 0 0.5% here, right? Um, it's because uh, this amount of player goals we simulated in our uh, PyMC model and amount of lambdas are different random variables. And even though uh, lambda by definition is expected value and here we Calculating the same expected value, but explicitly because of the sampling and because of that noise, we are getting slightly different numbers, even say they are very, very close. Uh, let's move on. Mm -hmm. We have two very small samples to finish with, and first one of them is uh, about creating odds for the player's goals duel. Uh, let's move to the presentation for a second, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we have a screenshot um, which basically shows us how duels look like. But these duels are related to the fantasy points and we are going to talk about it uh, in a few minutes. Um, duels basically, it's, uh, let's, let's probably start with idea of odds. Uh, odds are very same, uh, same uh, thing to the probabilities, but it's and it's just another number to describe the probability, right? Uh, but in our case, odds are just is just one divided by probability of some event. So if probability of some event is close to zero, odds are also going to be close to zero. If some event is very unlikable and uh, probability of that event is high, uh, odds are. Mm, and sorry, probability of that event is going to be small, obviously. Uh, then also going to be extremely high, up to 20, 100, whatever. Um, yeah. So uh, in this uh, task, we would like to try to create uh, betting odds for the duels uh, for the amount of player goals. The idea is very simple. We have two players. In our case, uh, their surnames are going to be Higuain and Ramsey. And for each of these players uh, is having a chance to score more goals in the game than his opponent. We would like to find a probability for Higuain to win this duel, to Ramsey to win this duel, and probability of a draw. As we recall, our probabilities uh, for goal for both of these players are not extremely high, like uh, lambda for, for going is 0 0.25 and for Ramsey it's slightly smaller and like about 0 0.2. Uh, so let's try to um, explain the code here. So we are finding traces for them. Traces uh, basically are just samples uh, with the data related to the players. Uh, and we have around 40,000 rows of the samples uh, with different uh, simulated uh, matches for these two players. After that, uh, we are going to compare Igoin's performance by this Ramsey performance on each of these samples, right? And we will have, uh, we'll find some numbers uh, of the simulations in which Igoin won, in which Igoin lost the game, and in which we have a draw. And after that, we can find our uh, odds in a very simple way. And here they are. 
well, as I have explained to you, odds are basically one divided by, by probability. Probability in this case would be uh, amount of events when Egoyen wins the duel divided by amount of simulations. And in our case, it's going to be vice versa. So we divide on simulation count by uh, count of events when Egoyen won. And um, yeah, here is um, a histogram that basically shows uh, the same conception. So Ramsey, who is colored in orange here, uh, is slightly more uh, likely than Egoyen to score exactly zero goals. But, but when we're talking about one goal, two goals, or even three goals, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, Egoyen uh, is a slightly better scorer and his probability for these events are slightly higher. That's exactly what we expect. And as you recall, about 40 minutes ago, Alex has explained to you the idea of fantasy points. Uh, I would just recall it. Um, basically, for each of our um, players, uh, we can make some kind, users can make uh, some kind of predictions over their fantasy points. Uh, different players in real football um, can uh, make different events happen on the field, right? Uh, Messi can score a goal, Messi can make an assist, uh, Messi's team Barcelona can consider a goal, uh, anything else. And each of the actions, each of the events, we call it player events, um, can uh, earn player uh, some points. For goal, uh, in our case, uh, it's going to be plus six fantasy points. For us, it's going to be plus four fantasy points. And let's assume that we are going to decrease uh, players' stake by two fantasy points for each goal that his team is considering. Um, model is very similar here to what we just saw. Um, we are going to use to name uh, in the squad player uh, Igorin as player one and uh, Ramsey from previous sample as player two. And also, we're going to include uh, some player assist odds. Uh, we don't know for sure the numbers, so I just assumed it to make it slightly more interesting that uh, lambda for Igorin assist is equal to 0 0.2 and lambda for. Uh, Ramsey assist is equal to 0 0.3. As both of them are playing for Juventus, we have the same amount for considered goals for their team. I just assumed it's equal, uh, lambda here is equal to 1.4, and it's again uh, Poissonian random variable. And um, now we are going to calculate fantasy points for both of them. In a very simple manner, we get our trace after the simulation and we multiplied our trace. Uh, for goals by six, our trace for assists by four. Following our uh, mm, fantasy points scoring system, and uh, multiplied by minus two, probability each considered goals uh, that will be found in that trace. Um, after that, we, we can visualize the data and. Um, yeah, Ramsey is again an orange line and we can see that these players are very close. It's correct because they are odds to score and to make an assist are very close and uh, their considered goals are going to be identical in all the cases. Uh, let's try to generate odds from here, uh, but uh, this time we aren't going to generate odds for draw because as you might recall in Actual, uh, in actual duels, in case of the draws, uh, we're not, we're just canceling duel. We don't care about such simulations. So we always think about is just a duel of the Rams versus Iguain. And we can um, try to make the simulation and um, we have uh, 40,000 uh, rows for both players uh, in um, 40,000 simulations. Uh, in first, uh, Egoyen wins in 10,600 of them, uh, Ramsey wins in 11,000 of them, and... Uh, okay, I'm not actually exactly sure. 
yeah, let's probably, mm, yeah. And uh, we have drilled in uh, such a number of simulations and after that we can uh, find odds for these two players. Uh, odds for Iguain are equal to 2.11 and odds for Ramsey are equal to 1.89. Uh, basically, forgive me for that uh, code snippet. I just did not ex uh, re execute it. Uh, so, yeah, correct odds are here. And uh, in real life, Egoin uh, is going to be slightly less likely to win the duel uh, than Rams, just because uh, he has a much smaller probability to have a uh, very good score for um, the assist than Rams because uh, his lambda is smaller by 0 0.1 and it's big enough difference to make Rams to win the, the duel. Uh, I believe that's it from the um, bias for the bias in part and I believe that's it for our notebooks part of the webinar and uh, yeah, I think Maria should continue from here, right Maria? I'm sorry, yes. Uh, or should I ask her questions first? Um, I, th I think you you can look at, on questions and I will, it took me just three minutes, yes, so two minutes, yes. Uh, but yeah, okay, you, no, no problem. Uh, try, to make, um, try to stop sharing uh, because I need to share my screen. Oh yeah, uh, so should I ask her questions first, right? Um, I, okay, okay, uh, then I will okay. give it after you, yes, okay. Okay, okay, cool, thank you. Uh, so first question is a uh, question if can if we can uh, make a recording of this webinar yes we did right Maria I believe we did so uh, so I replied one. already on this question yes oh, okay thank you. yes okay um, Petro Ivanok is asking where you did pick up data sets and how did you get data in real time uh for the first question uh, our company is collecting historical uh, sports data as we are covering fantasy sports for a uh, few years already and that's basically data from uh, our database but i believe if you will take a look you can find some data in the open sources like uh, uh, there might be some apis with historical data sets you you might try to start there um and about the second part of your question how how do we get data in real time uh, we have data providers for that purpose and and yeah and also in our uh, team we have um, a separate department uh, uh, who whose response is to watch in real time sport games and uh, uh, provide us with stats uh, updates, uh, any kind of information about them in real time. So that's the setup motion. Uh, Vladislav, uh, have you tried DNN? Uh, have they failed to deliver better results than MCTCS on learning regression? Uh, frankly, no, I did not. Uh, might be interested to try. If you have any results, I would be very glad if you would like to share it. Um, next question is how you verify predictions. Do you compare against results from player games? Uh, yeah, just as I sh has shown, um, for instance, in the first problem, right? Uh, we have been doing verification of our prediction versus our actual amount of scored goals, right? So mm, that's how it works. We are trying to make prediction and uh, generate some kind of predictions for historical matches uh, with our new model each time we are going to improve it and after that we are checking is our model better now or worse or how did it change i believe it's very common approach and i believe everybody does the same um so just a bit of confusion. Is this fantasy sports are eventually related to gambling with bigger player agents? Yes, they are. Um, well, mm, fantasy sports 
um, can be played just as a um, game between players when you can pick random players uh, to your team, uh, fill your budget with them and uh, get some results compete, uh, competing in real, in real time on real matches with many of other players. But at the same time, you can um, create some uh, betting markets based on fantasy sports, right? Uh, it might be gold markets as in uh, one of the samples we had here about Igoi, yeah, I bet it was under number three. It might be fantasy point markets. Uh, I intentionally simplified our scoring model here, but basically this are working the same. Uh, so yes, uh, fantasy points and uh, betting markets might be connected. Um, yeah, I believe that's it. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for being here. Yeah. I would like to 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 add a, to one of the answers, if I may, regarding the uh, neural network questions, if we use them. Uh, you know. There is a lot of data in the sports, but that data is also very much segmented. You know, there are lots of uh, sports events, uh, lots of players, there are uh, uh, lots of matches. But if you look at, for instance, a player in the Premier League in, uh, in a season, he only plays 300 matches, right? And that is a lucky player, which means that uh, basically the data points for each, the number of data points for each player is pretty low, especially that his performance changes from season to season, right? So you cannot rely very much on the performance from uh, 10 years ago if you have data points because that player's profile has changed a lot. Which means that uh, our models, we, we try to keep them as simple as possible, to have uh, as few uh, predictor variables as possible because and otherwise the risk of overfitting is super, super high. And this is why you know, and this actually answers the question about uh, testing. Yeah, uh, that's why it is even more critical to split the data into test and train because overfitting is, um, is a very, very big problem in, uh, in sports prediction. Uh, and testing, okay, yes, it's done by looking at past results and, uh, you know, hoping that uh, your results are good. Mm, okay, guys, if you have, uh, oh, yeah, I, I believe we have one more question. Do you use some sensitive data that can influence players, like tweets from clubs, tweets of players, etc.? No, we I don't, uh, I, I think. Yeah, Alex? Yeah, yeah I can answer it a bit. Uh, we yeah. don't, uh, because we also have the possibility, not, not automatically at least, we have a trading department and a stat center department that are actually following these trends and they have a very nice interface that uh, allows them to tweak odds. So basically in case that there is not enough information, we use our odds. If we find more information in the markets that was impossible to incorporate in our model, like for instance, I don't know, that the specific player received uh, I don't know, an accident or I don't know, is not playing or something, then uh, the manual intervention is, uh, is critical in this case. But what is very, very important is to cover as many players and markets as possible. That's why even though we make intervention from sometimes for one, two players, we cannot afford to make intervention for 300 players. That's, uh, that's simply too much. Because of this, the, the models are basically uh, used for automating the boring work of, uh, of start center so that start center people can, can actually focus on uh, uh, bringing real value, and that is actually understand the sports uh, and uh, what's happening in, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, okay, I believe we're done with questions. Um, so, yes, thank you guys for being there, and uh, I believe, Maria, you can continue from here. Thank you, Alexander, and thank you, Mikhail, for the presentation. Now, on a moment, I... Uh, mm. uh, отже, якщо ви цікавитеся цим напрямом і мрієте працювати з даними, аналізувати дані, запрошуємо вас на нашу магістрську програму Data Science. 
А на цьому сайті ви можете більше знайти інформації про нашу програму. А також цього року ми все-таки плануємо провести дві літні школи – Львів Data Science Summer School і Львів Business Analytics Summer School. Ми запрошуємо всіх охочих провести два тижні літа з нами. Школи, попри карантин, ми все-таки очікуємо, що школа відбудеться, і тож, якщо вам цікаво, будь ласка, долучайтеся до нас. І нарешті ми хочемо повідомити, що наступного тижня ми будемо мати вебінар з Катериною Зоріною, це випускниця нашої магістрської програми, аспірантка технічного університету у Празі. І цей вебінар, як завжди, буде проводитися у 4-7 годині. Слідкуйте за нашими новинами у Фейсбуці. Всім дуже дякую. Thank you very much. Thank you, Олександр Фей. Thank you, Михайло. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. How do I stop the video or how it works? Oh. Yes, just stop the video. I will, I will reply on two questions and turn on to the meeting. Okay. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you, John.